everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda N and I love exploring unsolved creepy mysteries, but today on the channel I'm exploring a solved one because there's an update to it. And I also want to put, I guess not a disclaimer, but maybe a little bit of a warning here. Um, today's video is unscripted. You'll kind of see why, but the reason is because I actually had one of you lovely people uh, reach out to me, uh, Brent, I am sure you're watching this, and Brent is from Arizona and he knows a lot about the Forest Fen treasure and even had a letter sent to him from Forest Fen about his solve. Uh, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, I found it really interesting. Uh, I did a little bit of digging, I'm sure you wouldn't mind that, Brent. Um, I did a little bit of digging to be sure that, you know, this letter is legitimate, um, just to see, okay, you know, is this person just kind of telling me a story? But nope, Brent is a cool guy, I've had a few conversations, and I just wanted to share with you all this letter for any of you who might be interested in the Forest Fen mystery. So I'm going to start by reading that and then talk a little bit about the update that's happening. So here is the letter. It is from Forest Fen in Santa Fe. I'm going to just kind of blur out the address there. I don't really want anyone sending uh, Forest Fen's address any letters. He has passed away, so I don't really know who's there now, but I would assume that they wouldn't want any letters sent to them. So. Just gonna go ahead and black him that out. So here is what the letter says. My dear friend Brent, it is with both sadness and gladness that I write you. I'm sad for you, but on the other hand, when I explain the situation fully to you, you will know the reason for my gladness. I hope you will share in the gladness. For years we have talked by phone about the treasure. I got to know you by name and voice. When I picked up the phone and heard your voice on the other side, I felt like I was talking to an old friend. You see, you have become one of my favorite people in the thrill of the chase. I have followed your adventure as you worked through my clues and maps searching for just the right place. In fact, as you told me on the phone about your search, I knew you were right on top of it. Secretly, I was thrilled about how you put together the clues and believed you would be the one to find it. On the phone, I can't say anything about how close a person is to the treasure, but I wanted to shout that you were right. I was impressed with how you narrowed down the search, used the clues, and pinpointed the treasure. It was hard for me to hold back and not tell you so. Now comes the part of the letter that will make you sad, but be sure to read all the way to the end so you will know that there is also gladness in this letter. I first talked with Carol about three years back. Her husband was serving overseas in the Middle East. She and the three girls, ages eight, five, and three, were living near Denver, Colorado during this time and she would often take the girls out to the mountains and camping. It took her mind off how much she missed her husband. Then came the knock on the door. When she answered, two gentlemen in dress army uniforms stood there looking very official. Yes, it was bad news for her and the three girls. Her husband and his team had taken a direct hit in the field and he didn't make it out. He had given his life for our country. She found herself a widow on that day and the three girls fatherless. As she was packing up her husband's thing, she ran across my books in the treasure. In fact, I had autographed one book for her husband. She felt the books must be important and put them to the side to keep. During this last cold winter and bad snowstorms, she was not always able to get to work in Denver, and as she was home without plans for the day, she picked up the first book and started reading. Then she read the second book. A map and notes had been placed in the back of the book, and when it fell out, she found her husband's notes. He had been planning a treasure hunt for the family. That is when she spread the maps out and started to search possible treasure sites. In all of this, she thought she would make a spring trip with the girls to do what her husband had wanted to do, a family trip to search for the treasure. It was a way to honor him. She gathered the three daughters and they read the books together. She booked a motel room for the hunt, thinking it was still too cold to camp out. In late March of this year, this is important, this, this isn't the letter, but this is important. Um, in late March of this year, Carol took the girls out of school, packed up the truck, and headed out for the family treasure hunt. On the first day, she found the roads too muddy and turned around. They found nothing. On the second day, she took the girls for a long, muddy hike. The girls looked around the rocks, searching for clues. 
they found nothing. That night, back at their motel room watching the news, Carol's watched TV and saw that the next snowstorm would be coming in soon. She might have one more day to search, but then needed to head back to Denver to arrive home before the storm. On the third and last day of the trip, the weather had warmed up slightly and the road was not so muddy. She said the girls were excited and thrilled about the search that day. They drove in further on the trail. Her youngest daughter said, stop, mom. Surprised, she stopped the truck and turned around and asked her little daughter why she said to stop. She answered that her daddy whispered stop in her ear. I believe they must have had a guardian angel that day because they searched and found the treasure. Carol called me and thanked me for being so generous with the treasure. She was having a hard time paying her bills since her husband died and was worried about the future. Now she has a wonderful gift that will help them with bills and allow each daughter to attend college. You see, Brent, I am sad for you that the treasure was found before you could get back and claim it. But on the other hand, I am glad that this deserving family found it. I know that you have a kind heart and can feel gladness for them just as I do. Carol told me on the phone that the thrill of chasing the treasure with her three daughters was a positive healing experience for the family. She knows that her husband is watching out for them from beyond. I asked her if she was prepared for me to announce this and end to a chase. She told me not to do that and that she wants to keep it secret for her family's privacy. If word got out, sorry, I'm flipping the page. If word got out, she couldn't protect her family. I had to promise her, but with the exception of telling my one true friend named Brent. My trusted friend Brent would understand and make the same promise. That's when she gasped and told me her husband's name was Brent. She also pointed out that others might find the chase as a healing experience, as she did with her daughters. She described how the real treasure is connecting with family in the outdoors, and she doesn't want to take that dream away from other people. So, my true friend Brent, I am telling only you about this. We are kindred spirits. Our hearts beat for the thrill of the chase. I feel close to you and can share the sad and happy news only with you, Brent. This will be our secret. This will be our promise. We are joined together in this oath. It is an honor to stand shoulder to shoulder with you in keeping this promise together. I will keep the secret as I promise. I trust that you will too. If you or anyone calls me, I will keep the promise and deny that the treasure has been found. If any asks about this letter, I will deny this letter to keep my promise. I know you will do you, your part. Keeping our promise, Forest Fen. Oh my gosh, guys. When I read this letter, I was stunned. I hope you all are too. This really does seem to be from Forrest Fenn. I mean, I, I have absolutely no reason to believe why Brent would lie to me or any of that. And on top of it, Brent sent me a Google Doc with everything about where the chase was, um, where he, or where the chase led him, I should say. Again, this is unscripted. Uh, where the chase led him, and it was a 67-page Google Doc, so pretty sure that would be a very elaborate ruse if someone was trying to pull my leg. Uh, this, this is genuine as far as I can tell, and this means a lot. What this means, first of all, let's kind of dissect this bit by bit here. This means the treasure wasn't found as recently as we think. It was found back in March. So that means that only Brent, Carol, her daughters, and Fen himself, maybe, you know, anyone that Carol told, only they knew that the treasure was found in March, which is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. And months and months later, when it came out, Fen said that it was in Wyoming and just said that a guy found it. I wonder if that if it was kind of a reference to Carol's husband, maybe, because it is implied that the finder was male in, in my research then. So this is this is just stunning to me. I'm I'm really beyond words. I find this so interesting. And it's also a little bit odd. And you might be thinking, well, why is it odd? The reason why it's especially odd is because a recent news article came out from the New York Times that said Jack Stoof, I could be saying that name wrong, but Jack Stoof, 32, a medical student from Michigan, was the one 
that found the treasure, which doesn't add up to this. So now that Forrest Fenn has passed away, I have to wonder if this person was sort of made up or is taking the fall or is perhaps related to Carol because with um, lottery winners, for example, I know that their names are often concealed or they want their names to be concealed because they don't want people harassing them saying, you know, give me money. So I have to wonder if that's the case here. But the New York Times article reads that the man who found a hidden treasure chest said to be worth about $2 million last summer in the Rocky Mountains, one that had tantalized fortune seekers for a decade, was identified on Monday as a medical student from Michigan. And that's very, very different from the, the story that Fenn told Brent, where it was a mother, a widow, and her three daughters. I personally, I obviously prefer the idea of the finder being a widow who truly needed to take care of her three daughters. I personally prefer that story and I hope that that's true, but I find it so odd that they would say, oh, a man who's 32 found it rather than a more seemingly deserving family. I mean, I, I don't know this Jack. I don't know how deserving he is, but you know, you hear a medical student from Michigan versus a widow with three mouths she's trying to feed, and you know, you tell me who might need that money a little bit more. But it's very unusual. It makes me really want to know who this Mr. Stoof is, if he is possibly related to Carol, if this is real, if what what Fenn was thinking about this, what the truth is, Brent's story, Brent's conversations. I've spoken with Brent on the phone numerous times, and he has some really compelling arguments, and there's some speculation about who Jack Stoof actually is versus who Carol is. Um, also, just to throw this out there, um, I don't want anyone thinking that Brent, the person that gave me this information, I don't want anyone thinking that Brent was mad at Carol. Um, we spoke on the phone, I didn't get that impression at all. He wasn't like, oh, I'm really mad, I wish I'd found it instead of Carol or anything like that. It was just, oh darn, I was so close. Uh, Fen told me I was so close, that kind of stinks, that's, that's all. So, nobody go thinking that Brent thinks that these people don't deserve it. Um, anyway, yeah, I find this so interesting. I'm really curious your guys' thoughts on it. Apparently, there was a lawsuit involved here, which is why Jack Stoof came out in the first place, because according to this New York Times article, two days after the discovery, a Chicago lawyer filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court in Santa Fe on June 8th, against Mr. Fenn and the anonymous person who found the treasure. The lawyer, Barbara Anderson, said that after she had spent several years painstakingly deciphering Mr. Fenn's poem, uh, someone hacked her cell phone, stole information, and that's what led them to the trove. So there's been some issues over, you know, does Mr. Stoof, does Jack deserve this treasure, those kinds of things. Um, according to his LinkedIn, apparently he graduated from Georgetown University in 2010. He worked as a journalist and even for the satire website, The Onion. Um, I just want to put it out there. I don't really talk about my personal life on this channel. I don't intend to. This is just for exploring the unsolved. This is just for fun. But I want you guys to know that one of my other jobs uh, obviously, this isn't making me money. There's, I think there's only 80 of, you, 80 of you subscribed right now, so this isn't, you know, this isn't my full-time job or anything. Um, the job that I have does involve a lot of research and a lot of digging, so this isn't me trying to brag and say that I never make mistakes, but I read the New York Times a lot, I research a lot, I dig into things a lot, and not every issue is black and white. I'm a very skeptical person, but this has got to be one of the biggest 
gray areas that I have ever come across because that letter that I saw, that letter that Brent sent me that we just went through, it sounds like Fen too. Uh, I've spoken with Brent and this doesn't seem like Brent's style of speaking. This seems very much like Fen's perhaps rambling style. I, who am I to talk? This video is far longer than I intended already. But the point is, the point at the end of the day is that not everything is black and white. I'm really fascinated to know what the truth is here. I'm really fascinated to see if Carol will ever come out with the truth, if Mr. Stoof will ever admit that he may be covering up for someone, perhaps he is related to Carol, perhaps he's just, you know, someone kind of doing her a favor. I, I don't know. I don't want to speculate too, too much here, but I want to give a gigantic thank you to Brent for sending me this information. It is truly fascinating. I am so curious what you guys think. And Brent even sent me his solve and the information behind it, which again, thank you, even though, not gonna lie, it kind of stinks because it says that my solve was very, very off, but, you know, it's what I get. Uh, thank you so much again. Uh, I'm sorry that I know this went a little bit long, a little bit rambly, like I said, this was unscripted, but I just kind of wanted to give my pure thoughts and reactions reading this. I only read through it once before reading it to you guys and kind of researching it. So a little bit of a raw reaction there. So thank you again for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you're new and hit that like button. I put out a new video every Friday, although it's usually a little bit more scripted than this. All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye.